Okay, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. And uh, we're having a bit of a teasel takeover today because she has just decided that uh, she's finished recording hers and she doesn't want to move. So there you go, teasel's taking over. Okay, on this day in Tudor history, the 13th of December 1546, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, was led through the streets of London from Ely Place, where he'd been held since the 2nd of December, to the Tower of London. There he was joined by his father, Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk, who was taken to the Tower by barge along the Thames. The aim of this walk through the streets of London was to humiliate the Earl of Surrey. But instead of booing and jeering, the people of London appear to have been sympathetic to his plight. Surrey's biographer Edmund Bapst wrote, the crowd offered nothing but loud sympathy, saying aloud that it was a pity to put so fair a knight in the tower. Surrey and his father, the Duke of Norfolk, had been interrogated after accusations had been made regarding Surrey incorporating the royal arms into his coat of arms, showing that he apparently had monarchic ambitions, and also allegedly telling his sister Mary, widow of the Duke of Richmond, to try and become the king's mistress so that her family would be favoured. There were, of course, many at court who wanted to see the fall of this powerful family and who were willing to twist the truth to bring them down. As I said in my talk on Surrey's arrest, Surrey had been accused of improper heraldry by his former friend Robert Southall, who claimed that Surrey had used the arms of his ancestor Edward the Confessor in a shield he'd painted at Kenninghall. Well, he hadn't painted it himself, commissioned something which only the king was entitled to do, and that he'd placed the arms of England in the first quarter of his shield, indicating that he had a direct claim to the crown. This wasn't actually true though, but that didn't matter, not to Surrey's enemies, and also they could uh, make use of the fact that King Henry VIII was rather paranoid about claims to the throne uh, by this point. A desperate Duke of Norfolk wrote to the king the following day, proclaiming his innocence, confirming his loyalty, and offering the king his lands. He wrote, begs for grace, some great enemy has informed the king untruly, for God knows he never thought one untrue thought against the king or his succession, and can no more guess the charge against him than the child born this night desires that his accusers and he may appear before the king or else the council, knows not that lie has offended any man or that any are offended with him, unless it were such as are angry with me for being quick against such as have been accused for sacramentaries. As for religion, I have told your majesty and many others that knowing your virtue and knowledge, I shall stick to whatsoever laws you make. And for this cause, diverse have borne me ill will, as doth appear by casting libels abroad against me. Begs that he may recover the king's favour, the king taking all his lands and goods, and that he may know what is laid to his charge and have some word of comfort from his majesty. Unfortunately for the Duke of Norfolk, the king ignored him. Norfolk made a confession on the 12th of January 1547 in a last bid to save himself, but that didn't work either. And on the 27th of January 1547, eight days after his son's execution, his son being the Earl of uh, Surrey, who was beheaded, Norfolk was found guilty of treason by attainder. Fortunately for Norfolk, the king died before his execution was actually due to take place, so his execution never went ahead. He remained in prison during Edward VI's reign, and then Mary I pardoned him and released him in 1553. So his son, the Earl of Surrey, went to his death, but the Duke of Norfolk managed to survive and actually died in old age. Thank you for joining us today. I've got a very snorry dog on my lap here. She is lovely. Oh, big sigh. 
You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>